Hi guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by Easy Cooking Channel and my Easy Cooking blog tonight. Tonight I'm going to finish up sharpening a knife for you guys. Last week I ended off, I was still talking about Japanese water stones and I was getting really into it because, uh, like I said, it's the rage today. But one of my subs got in touch with me and said, well, besides the Japanese water stones, how do you sharpen knives? How do I sharpen my knives. And I gave it some serious thought. I caught a cold a couple of days ago and I'm finally over it and life has been a little bit hectic because I adopted my boy Riley which I'll do a video on soon. And I thought about it and thought about it and said you know what okay let's forget the esoteric bull crap and just go into the way I sharpen it because there are many ways to sharpen a knife. So tonight I'm going to show you how I sharpen my knives and I'll let the esoteric stuff go by the wayside because I really want to get back to cooking. So, as usual with YouTube, 15 minutes, let's get going, and I'll see you on the other side. Let me explain something. I use diamond plates to do the lion's share of sharpening, uh, rather than Japanese water stones, because traditionally, I'm lazy. Okay, Natural stones and Japanese stones have a habit of gullying or dishing. And these diamond plates do not. I usually finish off with a synthetic ceramic like this to get that razor's edge. But I use the diamond plates because for the investment, they literally last forever. I've had these for about 10 years. Okay. They sharpen quickly. Now, there is some debate. Some people say, well, the diamonds are too aggressive. And yes, they can be if you get the wrong brand of diamond and if you push too hard on the diamond, yes, then the diamond can be overly aggressive. But if you let the abrasive do the work and use a light stroke, these diamond plates take no more than a Japanese water stone, a Belgian water stone, uh, an Arkansas stone, okay? But you have to let the abrasive do the these work. last a long time, so let's get going. This knife is dull. This plate is a 120 mesh, 120 grit, extra coarse. It's used for fast stock removal. If your knife has gone from sharp to dull, this grit takes it from here. But the trick get, is, when right. you want to get your angle, is to thin out the back bevel. The back bevel being everything behind this Actual primary cutting, cutting edge. Angle. So you lay your knife flat, raise it up a little bit, and move the knife forward and raise it until the knife hits the stone, bites, and it doesn't want to move any further, okay? Then ease off about a degree or two and see if it'll slide forward smoothly. If it does, this is your angle to smooth okay. out the back. On the profile facing away from me, because this is a right-hand cutting knife, I've cut my angle. I flattened out the bevel. I don't know if you can see it with the light, but I flattened out the back bevel, which is everything be behind the primary cutting edge. I flattened it out and on this side if I run my fingers on it I can feel a wire or a burr standing up all the length of the knife. That means that one side of the knife has come to center okay, and gone over. Now I'm going to grind the other side to center and let it create a burr over on the same grit and then we're going to move okay. on. Now this is okay. hard for you guys to see but right now, there's a wire on the opposite side, okay? So I've had both sides cross into each other. Now I'm going to move to the next higher grit. Now I keep it tight, okay? Some guys go from like, you know, 220 to 600 and stuff like that. And I'm going from 220 to 325. And I'm going to wet the diamond, and I'm going to lay the knife down again. This is a tedious chore. Sharpening can be very tedious unless you have high-speed equipment, so you have to have patience. I raise the knife. I move forward again until it stops right here. Then I back off, and I start thinning that back bevel. This is a 325 micron, 325, oh, excuse me, 325 mesh, 325 grit okay. stone. 
So I've worked on the 325 mesh and the burr is still folding over back and forth. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a little piece of tin foil here, okay? And it runs the length of the blade, okay? Now I started on this side, now I'm gonna flip it over and once again, move forward, there's my angle, okay? Drift backwards a degree or two and I get a nice smooth motion. Now I'll work the burr back to this side at 325, and then I'm going to go to 600. Okay. And we're just going to work through the grits and bevel this blade. The grits, okay. this stone here is a 600 mesh, 600 grit. Okay, And I've put the burr on both sides, so now I'm here at 600. And once again, blade goes flat. Raise it up, let it travel. When it stops, right here, it's biting. Back a degree or two, and work it. Now, if you're listening closely, you'll see that each progressive grit that I'm using sounds quieter and quieter because it is a finer grit. And this grit now is working the burr on the offside part of the knife. This knife is grounded about a 70-30. I modified it. Okay. And I'm not pressing very hard and the water displaces the particles, what some people call swarf. And I'm going to work this knife until the burr comes up and then once again I'm going to turn it over and then after this 600 I'm going to take it to a 1200 and then we're going to finish it on some ceramics, a poor man's strop, and a leather strop. So bear with me, and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I raised the burr on both sides at 600, I'm gonna do a couple of what I call equalizing strokes, because I can feel the angle on both sides. Okay, couple of equalizing strokes, okay? I do this on each side, 10 or 20 times per side, and then I'm going to move to the 1200 and do a little extra flattening of the bevel, then I'm going to cut the edge, then we're going to strop the blade, and it'll be ready to go. Okay guys, well here I am at 1200 mesh, 1200 grit. Now you see I have the stone going from right to left instead of up and down. And that's because when I get to this level of polish and beyond, I don't like to grind, okay? I like to do nice, smooth strokes, feeling the angle on each side. This is an asymmetric grind, okay? And this 1200 mesh, 1200 grit diamond, will put the first layer of mirror finish on this blade for me. You just have to learn to feel the angle of the knife, the angle of the grind that you put on to polish, and it takes a little practice. And this is where I start to baby my blades, and I don't use that reverse Japanese grinding stroke anymore. Doing it this way is a little easier. It saves a little bit on steel. Although, as I said, not a lot of steel is being taken, okay? And you'll just learn to feel the sweet spot as far as the angle is concerned. So I'm going to put the first level of polish on this blade, and then we're going to move on to the ceramics, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, the last grid I left off at was 1200. This is a synthetic ceramic. It's a hard ceramic. Okay, it's not a rubber base, it's not a clay base. It's a synthetic made in the USA. It's smooth as glass, it registers at about an 1800 grit, and I'm gonna do some nice light one strokes on the angles that I've created on this 1800, and then I'm gonna move to a 2200. Here we are at 2200 grit. This is smooth as glass, okay? 
smooth as silk. You wouldn't need to go any more. And I'm just going to do some ones across, okay, on the angles. Now, remember, there's still a burr to think about. And yes, I can still feel it. So the easiest way to remove a burr that I know of is here's a piece of 2 by 4 okay? Like what I had the plates laying on before, and you take the blade and you lay it on there nice and easy and just draw, okay? There's your burr. You might not be able to see it. That little thin piece of tin foil just came off the blade, leaving a hard edge. Now, I'm going to finish tuning it on this 2200 grit ceramic, and I'll be right back and we'll do a little poor man stropping and a little leather stropping, and then we'll do some cutting. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. I know you can't see it, but the blade has a very high polish on it now. And I'm going to do the same thing I did the last time with the big kitchen knife, although some people have written me and said, oh, that's really not good to do. And you know what? Tough. Okay. But here we go. Razor sharp. Okay. Been doing this for so long, and the people tell me, don't do that. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Razor sharp. Okay? The other test. Chisels. You hear that? Chipping my fingernails away. Okay? All the way up and down the blade. You just got to be careful when you do it because you could lose a chunk of yourself real easy. A little bit of paper. Okay? So you want to get into maybe doing some feathers. See? Nice thin cuts. Ribbons. Feathers. Okay. okay. Sharp enough? There you go, guys. One sharp Japanese petty knife. Okay. I hope you can see it. There you go. There you go. As if that wasn't sharp enough for you, if that couldn't do all the tricks of the trade in your kitchen that you wanted it to do, this is my patented poor man strop. And this is just a piece of cardboard from a box with some metal polish that I've rubbed into it and I let it dry. Now if you want to go higher than the 2200, say 3000 grit that I was using, you can use this poor man strop because metal polish is like what? Maybe anywhere from 6,000 on up. And you lay your blade flat and you raise it a little bit. And you draw it back. Okay? That's if you want to get an even finer polish. Okay? Feel the edge. Okay? Bring it back. Light pressure. You don't need much pressure. Okay? That little gray shadow, metal removal, because metal polish has grit. So yes, it's going to take a tiny bit of metal, and it's going to polish it. Okay? Okay, guys, last but not least, if you happen to have a strop like this, which is a razor strop, you can lay it across a 2x4 and do a final stropping of your knife. Move it to the edge. Feel for the angle. Raise it and move back. Okay, guys, I want to thank you for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel and Easy Cooking blog tonight and looking at the various ways you can sharpen. I demonstrate here, you know, how sharp is sharp? How sharp do you need your knife to be? What is it that you are cutting that's so important that you have to polish a knife to 10,000, 15,000, as low as 8,000? Okay? Okay? So, Knife at 3,000, whatever you want to cut. How sharp is sharp? Okay, I've shown you how I sharpen my knives. This is how I do it basically on an everyday basis. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me anytime because I love nothing better than a sharp knife. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.